everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. So, um, as everyone knows, the Republicans in the Missouri House just passed what they're calling the largest um, corporate tax cut in Missouri's history. What I will say is it's maybe the largest, most irresponsible thing that we could possibly be doing in this moment. You know, it's really astonishing when just a few days ago Republicans were on the floor saying that we can't afford tax cuts for feminine hygiene products or uh, tax cuts for food or things that help everyday Missourians, but instead we're going to try to make Missouri the lowest in the country for corporate tax cuts. We are currently second in the country, um, and I believe it's only Texas who goes further than us. And it is really astonishing, again, that we're spending time talking about something that nobody is asking us for. Chambers of Commerce are not asking for. Corporations are not pounding on our doors saying, I want a high, we need a lower co corporate tax cut. What they are doing is saying that we need investments in infrastructure in roads and bridges. What they are saying is that we need to be addressing violent crime in our state and addressing the guns that are all over the place with toddlers carrying them around. They're saying things like, hey, these social attacks against things that, that matter, the LGBT community, et cetera, that's why we're not coming to your community because employees don't want to move to Missouri. That's what we're hearing from the business community. We're hearing from small business owners that they need help, that they can't find staff, that they can't keep their doors open. And instead, the Republicans yet again put the rich above everybody else. Um, that is definitely the biggest thing that, that happened this week. Of course, we had sports betting, which most of our caucus was in support of. Um, and, of course, the elephant in the room right now is, this, is the budget uh, sub that we received from Representative Cody Smith. Yet again, we are doing corporate tax cuts on one side and then not investing in things like early childhood or our K-12 funding is getting shifted around. The complete cuts to libraries are completely zeroed out now. Um, the list goes on and on. I'm happy to dive into some of the cuts that we find most egregious, um, but with that, we're just happy to take questions. On the tax cut, this is kind of two months after a special session last year with the largest income tax cut. Uh, one thing I asked the speaker about was the governor's thoughts on this. He obviously narrowed, it was, narrowly tailored his call last year. We mm -hmm. saw a corporate proposal that eventually got stripped out in the House. I mean, is there a chance, I don't know, I'm not sure how much insight you have into the governor's thoughts on this, but is this something he's necessarily going to be in favor of? Is passing another one in the last one? Yeah, I would love to see the governor veto this if it does make it all the way through. Um, I said this on the House floor, and I will say it again. Before the special session came about, uh, our leadership team met with the governor um, in his offices to talk about that tax cut. He said to us, to, I know that you don't support this, but this is the last one I'm going to do while I am governor. And he said that, and he said that what we would like to do is give, give me this, and then we're going to invest in things like childcare. And he looked me dead in the eyes, knowing that's something I care about, and said, we're going to make investments there. We're going to make investments in education, the developmental disability community, where it comes to employment pay. Um, you know, he went on and on about the various things that our caucus has been fighting for for a very long time that he would like to see investments in. So he did tell us that that was the last one he was going to do. I have to ask about, um, I don't know, do I have any budget people? But they're no, probably all downstairs. I, can, I will do my best to speak okay. on their behalf. Um, the biggest thing is that we saw uh, Representative Cody Smith, I know they're in markup now, but child care, mm -hmm. pre-K, I-70, and then of course the libraries. Yes. And three of those things were in the governor's state of the state, big things in his budget book. So his, your response to that as we just possibly cut 1.3 billion, but then we're also gonna take out the governor's biggest priorities. The substitute that we received from the budget chairman this week is wild. <laughs> that is the word that I would use for it. Because to your point, as, as the governor put out in the state of the state, we have a wonderful opportunity right now to make serious investments. And you all heard me at the press conference after that. I don't, we had never stood up for a state of the state for a member of the other party like that ever before. And we were excited for the conversations that the governor was presenting. Again, having received the tax cut that he asked for, to then say, okay, let's take this opportunity, this once in a lifetime opportunity that we have as a state and make real investments in the things that everyone cares about. Childcare, early childhood education, and the I-70 project is something that will impact the entire state, um, not just from those who live here, but from the ec economic standpoint as well. I think it seems as if it's a giant middle finger from the Republican Party in the House to their own governor. It's yet again another blank check that the House is sending to the, to the Senate. Yet again, the Senate is going to get to control this budget, and I bet you that folks behind me are going to be voting with the Senate this time. When it comes to child care, obviously that money has been stripped out. Is there a desire that you've heard in the chamber right now for a legislative path forward? I know there's a 
that working with Linda Shields' uh, House bill on this trio of tax credits just to have a perfect rule. Mm -hmm. There was talk with budget chair about you know having a way down to pass this legislation for universal pre-K before any money gets allocated there. Either of those two things, is there a desire among the folks to address that in the coming years? The child care thing is, is a, another example of talking out of both sides of their mouth. Um, yes, there is desire to pass legislation to impact child care and make it easier for families to access it. Not only um, those bills that you highlighted, but I believe that Representative Hannah Kelly is going to have another tax credit different than the Senate version for child care. Um, there are a lot of things moving that are bipartisanly supported when it comes to this, but yet then they go and cut all of the funding. So it's really great to get the headlines to say we care about our families, let's pass a bill out of the house, let's do this, let's make it a priority, and then fund it, or not fund it, and completely gut it in a substitute, um, that just doesn't make sense. The things that are happening right now are not computing. Have you, um, uh, Representative Ani, I know you were kind of involved with sports betting, just, and you spoke out about it on the floor. Any, have you had any conversations with the other side of the building? Because that's, something Missourians say the most about it seems like. Right, yeah, so th the conversations with the Senate are going to be ongoing and, until this either gets resolved or, or whatever happens, right? So yes, of course we've been talking um, with the Senate and we, we are hopeful that we can find a path, a, a clean path forward for sports betting. Um, that said, um, you know, the further we get into session, uh, that hope wanes, um, and it, as it has in years past. Um, and, and yeah, I, I do think that, that we're likely to run into the exact same roadblocks that we always have. Um, but, you know, I, there's, there's always hope. It springs eternal. <laughs> Thank you. On, on the legislation passed by the Senate uh, addressing both trans health care and then athletics, that's probably going to come over here. I think there's a debate right now in the Senate, uh, at least in the coming weeks. Your thoughts on that legislation? Do you think there's any chance it gets deleted or changed at all mm -hmm. on this side of the building, or is it going to go through right here? Yeah, I mean, as folks have heard me say many times, these attacks on the LGBT community are dis they're, they're saddening, they're frustrating. Um, taking away parents' abilities to parent, again, talking out of both sides of their mouth. We're going to talk all day about education and the parents' rights to have control, and then the very next minute say that parents don't have the right to work with doctors and mental health care providers to do what's best for their kids. It's, it's picking and choosing of where our, where our priorities and beliefs are held in terms of who gets to do what with their own lives, and it's frustrating. But all that to say, you know, we were hopeful that the Senate was gonna um, find some language that was less egregious, um, that would allow uh, kiddos to be able to get the mental health care that they need, um, particularly in that medical bill. Um, that stuff obviously did not happen, and the versions that got passed out were, were in our opinion, very egregious. Um, is there a pathway to make some changes? Absolutely, there is. You know, our floor leader is a doctor over here. Maybe uh, he might intervene a little bit and, and bring some sense to the conversation about actually doctors having, knowing how to practice medicine and giving them some trust and not a bunch of legislators who are not from medical professions. Um, and of course, there are pathways in terms of loading it up. I will say, we saw after the Senate version passed, the House versions got amendments filed literally that day. Um, the Senate version, I do believe there are going to be amendments filed by Republicans onto that. And so either way, this discussion is far from being over. Um, and I do think that it will probably end up going back to the Senate. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys.